how to make Rohan or Edoras buildings for your Lord of the Rings Warhammer games. Hi there and welcome to Good Enough Scenery and today I'll be showing you exactly how I made this entire building with thatch roof, wood effect foam and of course the whole thing comes off that it is a playable inside as well. Let's get straight into how to do that right now. So I'm starting with a fairly simple building. I have my kind of design set out here. So to start off with, I'm going to make this wall here and that's going to be a straight six inch uh, long by two and a half inches high. There we go, so this is going to be enough for this wall here. It's going to be cut lengthways down there, which means that it can do these walls here as well. And then the end pieces are going to be this shape. I'm going to cut all of this into one shape. Two and a half inches up and then it is three inches wide. That's what she said. To make the roofs easy, I want the top of this to be um, a right angle, which this provides perfectly. But this is three inches, so halfway is an inch and a half. This is halfway, so going perpendicular upwards, putting the point of this along there, and then having these, this intersecting that point, this intersecting that point. I will now butcher the cutting out of this. See what that will look like. Now these both need cutting down the middle that way, which I'm, you can do with a knife. I'm. Definitely not going to do it with a knife because I have a hot wire cutter, and that's what it's for. Uh, now, you could make a very simple house building with this. I'm just gonna add a bit more detail. I'm do a three inch one and three one inch ones. That is like the, the, the main bits of it built. The whole idea is to make these pieces all look like wooden planks and then have beams put over the top. I'm also gonna have a doorway because this will be playable inside. I mean, I appreciate it's a small area, but it could be a nice objective to defend. And again, tweaks are gonna have to be made to the these pieces definitely, but I'm going to cut a centimetre out here so this looks almost like a big fat arrow um, and then each one will have a thicker beam, like vertical beam placed in the corner. These end pieces I'm going to measure in one centimetre on this line here. We have this here with this. So all of the corners would have this. So let's cut a doorway out of this one to be one of the end pieces. And I think that's all the pieces made now. Now, in terms of making this look um, like a wooden thing. Let me show you what's going to happen with this bit here. So you need a wire brush. You can do this, you can draw on a wooden design with biro if you want. It will take a while, but um, so all you're going to do is get a wire brush. you've got your wood grain um, drawn on it, draw your planks on just by, I'm using the lines on this, or the grid on this. Hopefully that, I think that looks like kind of vertical wooden planks. So you've got that there done compared to that there, not done. 
corner pieces, which are going to be done in the same way. So that's done compared to... So you've got these like that, you've got that like that, and then you're going to have um, strips that you saw me cutting earlier, which are going to be going across here like this, and these are going to be done in exactly the same way. So this is more decorative than structural, but exactly the same thing with these ones as well. These need to have it done on. And this Scrape a wire brush in the direction of that wood grain on all of the wood on all of the construction pieces. So I'll be back in about nine years once all that's done. I went out long. So we have a couple of pieces here. I've cut them off at an angle here to match up for this bit here. Cut some bits, some of these thinner strips to length. But yeah, time to paint all of this now. Just using some burnt umber as our base coat. Nothing complicated here, just using a makeup brush here for some quick coverage. But trying to make sure that I do get into all of this detail that we've lovingly carved into it. So trying to paint along the grain as it were and just instantly, just with that small amount of paint, I think you can already see that is basically looking like wood, as far as I'm concerned. I'm gonna do a lot of painting and wash my hands. I have realized that I haven't given this, these poor people uh, a window. No, it's just a minor design flaw in um, my design. This roof came like this, it's actually gonna hit that. Small tweak, but one worth mentioning. Following this line here, just cutting off at that angle. All the way down, it just and then that needs to be painted. So now looking at making the roof piece itself. This is gonna be made out of um, some three mil MDF and it needs to be, so measure from the top, the peak of your roof down to how far you want it to go down. I want it to go down there and then overlap just a touch. It's two and a half inches, which is coming up a lot. When you're making stuff and you're not doing it with like laser precision, one of the best ways to work out how big something is gonna be is by putting the pieces together. So we know it's going to be, has to be this long, these pieces on the end, one on the other end as well, just over 18 centimetres. Seven and a half inches will give us a little bit of overlap. My favourite way to cut this is with a Stanley knife, not one of these kind of box cutting knives, but you're to push down with some actual force. You need a bit of force to get through that. hasn't quite come apart and that's kind of good almost. So I can instantly see what it would look like. Which is a nice cuboid shape. So I'm gonna cut this to the right length. Um, I'm actually gonna take the step now to glue this at the 90 degree angle that it needs to be at. Hot tip for you here. If you ever get anything delivered, like um, I had some shelves delivered the other day um, and they came with some Packaging like this, this is called a siming. She's got a perfect 90 on it. So when we're gonna glue this in a second, what you can do is actually use that to create your perfect 90 and just hold that in place. Bead of glue down. Yeah. Right, next for the top of the roof. Um, and for this, weirdly, um, using this or something like this. So this is an old fluffy cushion, which I've uh, 
decided to decimate, but you can buy um, fabric, you can go and buy second-hand fabric, second-hand cushions at charity shops, but you want a, this is, well, sometimes known as teddy bear fabric because it's you want a nice long thing on it. So get yourself a, a fluffy cushion. I'm gonna cut out a bit of this material which is just ever so slightly larger um, than this. Smother it in glue and then hold it down and give it a good chance to stick before doing the other one. And then it's gonna get only gonna get weirder from there. This is such a weird thing to be doing, I think, but here we are. Okay, so put that on there, and then I'm gonna give this a good chance to hold. Yeah, that's not bad. Just when you thought this build couldn't get any weirder, this is a combination of mostly PVA glue and some I've chosen white paint, any paint would do. I'm trying to ultimately make this more brown, so I haven't cared too much that I picked up a brush that I used earlier on some brown stuff. And we're gonna brush this on, but mainly we're going actually over the top of it. So if I actually do the, this side, you'll be able to see better. And notice that I'm kind of working downwards with this, and that's, ultimately we're trying to make this look like a thatch. I mean, that's, to be honest, that has gone pretty well as is, but then I've got a comb here. I think you can see that's starting to look a bit more like a thatch roof might, but eventually that's gonna set absolutely solid. So I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. Kind of looking like a thatched thing. If you have our Roof here looking kind of thatch like. Um, we are going to give it a little haircut. This is a colour that I uh, mixed up with brown and yellow, maybe. Nothing clever here. Well, the only clever thing is that I'm just going to. Stipple and push, so kind of following the lines again, kind of reiterating the straw nature. Okay, so that's one side basically done. I'm going to do the same to the other side. So you need to make another bit of it like this that goes between here and here. And what I decided to do is to do all of this and then customize around this. As, uh, as necessary. So how big are the bits of roof? Well, they are these bits here. The width for them is however long this length here is. Here is the same as from this to this. That's how long that bit is. Um, and then, so if you draw parallel lines of this length, and then the set square gives you your 45 degree angle there, and then that will meet up perfectly with this. The next step will be to glue these onto here with the glue gun. Also, I'm gonna add a small bit of uh, 90 degree of foam here, just to kind of help give that a bit of strength. So next up, I'm gonna do exactly what I did with this to this little piece here. So I cut some of this, I will glue it down, I will comb it, I will wait for it to dry, I will paint it. To take advantage of the detail and the wood grain that we've added, we're going to do some dry brushing and I'm going to use this bone white. I'm going to load up the brush and then brush it on something until nothing comes off. Grain is going in this direction, so we want to be going in this direction. Just lightly, not going down hard trying to paint, but just going over it. 
Because of something I'm going to be doing later on, I am not going to do any of the inside bits. So I'm going to ignore the inside, but all the outside pieces, I am going to do this. So you may have to load up your brush a few times, but it will last longer than you think, because you can go over the same part several times and it will, the color will come out the brush, even when you think that it's completely done. So. So I'm going to do that with all of the rest of the pieces. This is what the structure will end up looking like. I know I want to start with this one because this is one of the easiest ones to glue. Okay, so glue down here. Set it flat against it and then lift it away from the surface. That should hopefully bond pretty quickly. Same thing this end, one wall. So I'm going to do this in order of easiness. So I'll do this one. At this point I'm now going to glue the end pieces on because that's going to help define exactly where the sticky outy bit goes. That's the, I'm going to call it a porch. I feel like the beam should stick out a little bit, but I'm an idiot. I'm just going to eyeball it to get the vertical. And the thing is, this is a wooden shack. Not everything would be absolutely perfectly square but if it was a little bit off. The world does not end and the build isn't ruined in any way. So that went very well. Should fuse with it very nicely. Fiddly but not too bad. Just lining up top and bottom of that. There we go. And just cool, 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 cool. And this other edge here. I think they're going to be right on the inside edge because they need to fit with the roof part. Just to add a little rigidity, I'm going to take one of these extra ones that I did and I'm going to stick it in between these two. To... That's better. Having done the measuring, these walls, we need to be on the inside edge. So that's nice and easy to line up, fortunately. So there we have our basic structure done. Glue these onto here. All these extra pieces which I made all around. So just with super glue, I'm gonna stick all of these into place. And these are just kind of embellishments which you can decide whether to add or not depending on um, how much effort you wanna put in. This is good enough scenery after all. I've put this all together. I added an extra beam in there just for support and to look good. And here we can see what the inside is gonna look like in terms of floor size. So it's gonna be five centimeters by I'm gonna say 15 and a half and then four centimeters long, it juts out another kind of four or five centimeters. So that is the floor size that I am working with. So what I've done here is I've scratched out on this, reclaiming this from an old river tile as the base. Um, and that is what the floor size is gonna be like. Now I'm actually gonna have the whole building be removable. So I've cut out some XPS foam, but this is basically what the, the floor layout is going to be like. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do is get the aluminium foil here and start rolling all of this so it has a much more stony texture. I am going to just draw on random flagstony type shapes, um, almost hoping to kind of break it all up a little bit, make it breaking and want it to be uneven. That will do. It ends up looking like that. Okay, I've mixed up some light grey paint, it's gonna make a brush and it's gonna cover this whole thing. Yep, so already that looks like a floor.
Okay, we're gonna do the, the basing. Obviously I've uh, painted it green to start with. This is a kind of undercoat cover. And now I'm just gonna cover this. Okay, that should be good. If you find that your base is bending a little bit like this one is, I think it might have something underneath it as well. If you add PVA glue to the other side, it can flatten it out. So this may end up looking curved, but we'll see what happens. All right, so I'll start with this stuff. This is just, um, I think it's called Battleground Mix from the thing I got. So this is gonna be added first as a path. So there's a doorway here. So we're gonna sprinkle some of this like a path here. This is one of the doorways as well. So we've got this as path, and then we've got this battlefield scatter. Appreciate this isn't a battlefield, but I'm gonna try and add this just as a finish layer. Around here edge of where the building would be. The final part is going to be using the static grass applicator. So it's going to earth it like that. Got a mix of some quite hopefully luscious looking static grass and then I'm going to cover the rest of it in that which should be quite a stark difference. So I'll just show you quickly what that will look like. There. Let's line up the front and then this bit here. hold these in. There we have it. I pick it up just by the roof. Is it? Yeah. Just gonna add a little more detail with this is some of Vallejo yeah dark green and that makeup brush getting the excess off and we're gonna do a bit of a dry brush around the just towards the bottom. So I'm going to go around and do some of that so you'll see it shortly. So there we have it, our completed Rohan building. Hope you've enjoyed watching this build. Please like the video if you've liked it. Please comment with any comments that you might have, good or bad. And subscribe to the channel. There'll be more buildings coming up soon. Let me know in the comments what you would like to see me make next. But uh, I really hope you've enjoyed this build as much as I enjoyed making it. Catch you for another video soon.